Hi, it's good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the time is where you are. I am Chris Sweetleaf, uh, and this can be part of the Studio Madness fixing videos. Um, I've got a friend of mine, DJ Mystic, uh, also Co2. Um, he's given me this Axiom 49, this lovely uh, controller keyboard. That all it is is just a MIDI controller, but with lots of you've got pads and knobs and slidey things and buttons and all kinds of stuff. Um, a full-sized keyboard. How, how many? How many keys? How many keys do you think they are? Given the the, the num yeah, that's kind of the dead giveaway uh, right there. Um, I've got the smaller version of this, which is the uh, the 25, which is only about kind of yay big um, and has just a couple of couple of pads. Uh, but he's got this one, but he's he's passed it to me because um, there's a slight issue. The problem here is that the USB socket there. Um, you can see there's a bit missing. It should have. All you can see there is the four prongs, the little four contacts. Uh, because the plastic bit in the middle has snapped off, that is what it should look like. Um, and there's uh, four pins on there, two for power, two for signal. Um, and then these two big clips here are literally just to hold the hold the uh, the casing actually onto the, the electronics board, onto the PCB properly. Uh, if you're not overly confident with a soldering iron like this one, um, then I would say don't try this and give you know give it to, to someone if you know if, if you're not bothered about it going wrong and you don't mind doing it a couple of times to get it right then uh, why not but it's just the fact those pins are quite close together um just makes it a little fiddly because obviously when you're soldering you want to make sure that the solder doesn't bridge across two of them um that is going to be uh, my challenge for this afternoon keeps me out of trouble Okay, step one, remove as many screws as you can find. I started with the larger holes, um, which have the larger screws in them, um, which about that kind of a kind of a size. Um, note the thread. A few others. Um, I've marked the, the some of the larger holes on the back with tape, and then so that takes a, a larger thread screw. These are then you see that it's a slightly thinner thread screw um which is really helpful um and then again a couple of big ones there and a big one there and then these ones which are actually quite shallow were again the the smaller threads and then i've actually taped these ones because they're not only are they the smaller thread they're also shorter so i don't want to mix the screws up and and not be able to get them back where they came from same with this one again it's a small thread um then have to remove all of these little fader caps which just go on top of there um, and literally just a fairly you know not overly firm um, just pull those and they should come straight off um, and then the same with all of these uh, knob caps as well they're literally just you know some of these were, were a little um, a little stubborn, a touch recalcitrant, shall we say. They just didn't want to come off, so I had to kind of you know, pull firmly and just wiggle them left and right a little bit, and then eventually this was the last one that just came off. Um, it's a bit hard to tell looking inside, but there are um, some little spaces uh, that, that give it the, the flat edge. So when you put them back on, you have to make sure that the flat edge is on there. I mean, these are the full 360 degree um, digital pots. Uh, they click but they do click all the way around so there's there's no sort of um you know most most negative or most positive value they just turn all the way around if there isn't a right way or a wrong way round um because there's no indication actually on the knobs but as i say there is a, a flat spot on the shafts and there is a flat um it's hard to tell if i can get the camera to see maybe there we go you see there's just tiny little lumps there on the side um, they just uh, help the help the knob cap to grip, just so that it doesn't just spin round while the the shaft doesn't move at all. Yeah. Oh no, there we go. Okay. So that just kind of comes up like that. Get the under there, and then uh, it's going to be the same on the other side. I obviously can't do this with one hand whilst holding the phone camera, so I will take that off with both hands and then uh, show you the inside. All right, as always with these things, there was one screw that I'd missed, um, which was kind of under here somewhere. Uh, once I got that off, it literally just came up quite easily out of the way. 
there we go okay so um obviously that's the the top control board that's where the pads are um this is where uh, the the whole button and slider assembly is uh, the knobs up top around here um that is the led display um and then over here we've got a few more buttons there's a number keypad on the top there and then these are the um the bender and the modulation uh, so then obviously there's some ribbon cables going down here yeah, um, to Z, that looks like the, the main control board, it's got a nice big chip on it. Um, and then that bit there um, is what I want to try to get at. And as you can see there is the USB socket. So uh, I'm just going to have to carefully remove uh, these ribbon cables. Um, hopefully most of the time, um, not always, but most of the time these kinds of ribbon cables, what they do, um, is they make sure that each one is a uh, slightly different size so that you can't actually get them mixed up um, when you put them back in. Uh, also, the other thing that's going to help um, when putting it back together is going to be um, the distance and how close everything is. So obviously with that being, this one here being quite tight, it, you can see that it won't necessarily go, even if it did fit in that socket, which I'm sure it doesn't, it won't necessarily go in there um, without the cable getting completely bent out of shape. Um, and it's not uncommon for a lot of these ribbon cables to have these little 90 degree folds in them uh, just to, to get them to go where they need to be. Um, so again, just carefully grab quite firmly and pull on each side. You don't want to pull too hard um, because if it really is stuck in there, um, you can actually end up pulling the, the wires out of the, uh, out of the socket itself or out of the plug. Um, and that is... Not an easy task uh, to get them back on again, especially if they actually break. So um, grip, you know, fairly firmly on, on each side. Give it a little pull. Um, if it doesn't move, then either use a small pair of pliers or a small screwdriver um, just to get into the side of the connector and just pull them out. There's then also another one here. There's, uh, there's quite a few. Um, maybe because of all of the different buttons and uh, controls that there are on here and um, the board itself uh, looks in, in fairly good condition um, the, the kind of cavity under the uh, bender could probably do with a bit of cleaning but I'll sort that out in a moment um, that looks like uh, the ribbon cable for the actual keyboard um, again it's a little little twist in there which then goes up to uh, maybe some kind of power um, due to the fact that it's only got the two pins I would expect the actual control cable from the keyboard to have a lot more pins on it Probably some kind of digital matrix uh, running that. Um, right, another large long connector here. Again, just a pull and a wiggle. Um, and I can feel that one side's coming loose there. Same on the other side, pull and a wiggle. Possible. Also, you have to try and make sure, um, where possible, to try and pull them directly upwards. Um, because otherwise, because these sockets are literally just the holes um, and the pins are on the, uh, the plug down there so uh, most of the time the pins are actually quite um, quite solid and they're not going to move but you just have to make sure before you put the connector back on just have a quick look directly from above just to make sure that all those pins are still in in a line you haven't got one of them just slightly bent out of place because uh, otherwise the plug will not go in the socket or socket won't go in the plug whatever and that is the uh, oh look that's the that's the one for the power switch um, I can tell because you've got the, the four contacts there and on the other side is the little switch itself. So, um, just pull that one out and then that should pretty much be the board free. Yeah, there's nothing actually holding the electronics board, the connections board, uh, to the outer shell. So, all I've got to do now is just undo that screw, that screw, that one and that one. And you can see they've got these little wires, little black wires attached to it, so those are obviously grounding cables. Okay, so here it is, the connections board. Um, obviously you've got the DC power input, USB, MIDI in and out, not sure which way around that is. Um, and I think these are for expression pedals because it's just a control where there's no sounds on there. Um, but yeah, so we've just got uh, one, two, the two mounting um, contacts to hold it on the board. One, two, three, four in the middle there. Um, and then I believe that those four at the back no, those four at the back might be for something else. I'll have a quick look at that. I think it's literally just these two and those four, so just six all in all. Get the uh, solder sucker on there. Um, try and get those as clean as possible, so hopefully I can just 
pull that off quite easily. Okay, so uh, I've got the, the old socket off, um, finally, took a, a little bit of work, but get there, um, and you can see clearly the middle of that is just completely gone. Um, the trouble is what happens is if you if the middle comes out and then you don't realise, then you try and jam a, a plug actually in it, that's when all the pins get bent and it just gets, you know, mangled out of shape. Um, as you can see, I've got a bit of an issue here. You can see these these are the four pads, or should be the four pads, where the uh, the power and the signal connections are, um, and you can see that now only one of them has this little shiny reflective silver ring on it. Um, those are the actual pads of the the PCB which connect then to the connections. You can see there one, two, three, and four, um, and at least two and a half, almost three of those pads um, have been completely destroyed. Uh, they just came off as I was desoldering them. So what I'm going to have to do is put the socket in place and then carefully solder wires from these points, point one to there, point two to there, three to there, and then four to there. Just a couple of short, tiny bits of wire. It happens more often than, than you realise, depending on how, how um, resilient the PCB is. But this one, unfortunately, the pads just came straight off. So if I put the pins through and then try to solder on, where it hasn't got the reflective surface, that means there's nothing to actually solder onto. Um, that's literally just PCB with no electrical contact. Um, so yeah, that's how we're going to fix that. <sighs> Fun. Okay, so yeah, I've run out of memory on my phone, so I'm just going to use the uh, little HD cam. There we go. Put the first link in place, uh, which is literally just this one going from there to there, uh, which works nicely with the continuity. This one luckily still had um, enough of a pad on it to be able to uh, solder onto, so that one's good. I've just got to do a couple of tiny little ones just from there to there. So there we go, so that's that, uh, that little bent piece there. I'm just going to have to, obviously I'm going to have to reorientate and just bend it around a little more to get from that point to that point, and then do another one from that point to that point. Um, yeah, a little bit fiddly, um, but you kind of get used to it. So what I'm going to do is actually chop those down to roughly about half that length, um, which seems quite small, but believe it or not, it is just enough to uh, get onto the contacts there, because you don't need much. And obviously, I don't want the don't want the bit of cable actually hanging off and over um, any of the contacts, and, and you know, accidentally shorting out to the pins. Okay, well it may not necessarily look pretty, but it does work. Get this something I can use as a pointy thing. Uh, right, so uh, yeah, we've got this one here, which is going from the bottom left up to there. That one is going from top left to there. That one is going from top right to there. And then the trace, as I say, luckily the pad on that one was okay. Um, I've just tested them with the continuity test on the multimeter. They are all connecting how they should do, uh, and none of them are, are shorting out or crossing to the other one. A little hard to see if I can just point from the other side. This one here, um, you can see that the PVC shielding is okay on that one and that one on this one um, to get it into place. You can see that on this one, I actually held the soldering iron onto the points um, a little bit longer than uh, than I should have done, longer than I wanted to. The, the key with any small stuff like this is to, to try and use a hot soldering iron um, and to try and get on and off uh, nice and quick so that you don't um, cause any, any heat damage to anything else. Um, the insulation here on this tiny bit of cable you can see is melted ever so slightly um, and I just wanted to make sure that it hadn't melted through and uh, touch that contact but it hasn't it's it's still got enough on there um, and the others look good so hopefully uh, fingers crossed that is the the new socket on there um, as I say it's these two here there and there those two big ones which are the ones which just all they do is just hold it in place there there no there's no electrical contact I mean I think it, it may um, electrically be connected to ground um, just just for safety and the sake of it but there's there's no other contacts that the power and the signal come through these little four points here. Um, so all I've got to do now is put it back together um, and test it. Okay, so we've got the electronics board back in. Um, 
a couple of little spade connectors which were there and top corner there uh, which were for the, the grounding now there was that other spare cable that was just soldered on from underneath uh, and then just screwed on there so I re-screwed that back in um, it was only just the, the physical damage to the plug that was the problem so plug all of these connectors back in um, turn it on and then I'll plug it into my laptop and just make sure that it's registering properly Right, so it's all back together. Um, sat in the studio here with the uh, laptop and everything else. Um, just going to plug this in. Let's see exactly whether it works or not. Okay, a little switch. Does it work just on the USB? Yes, it does. And ting. Hopefully, means that installing device driver. Um, there we go, Axiom 49, it can see it and it's ready to use. Number pad buttons and of course your yeah, classic mod wheel, um, which we can see is still mod wheeling. 127.0 and then that's the... Now interestingly to note, um, with pitch bend wheels obviously it goes, technically it goes from 0 to 127, that's, that's the input that any digital controller takes, it will be the same for these, you see 0 from the bottom up to 127 at the top um, pitch bend, because obviously pitch bend needs to stay in the middle the middle of a pitch bend wheel is actually 64, so that's worth noting if I pull that down right the way down to the bottom, that's 0 the middle is 64 and up the top is 127, so the middle is 64 so any time we've got a pitch bend wheel isn't doing what it should do, it should be at 64 when in the middle like that and then obviously the th through either the, the software um, within the controller keyboard or within whatever digital audio workstation you're using I'm currently on Cubase you can set the pitch bend range uh, to whatever you want so you can set it to uh, a couple of notes or you can set it to a whole octave or two octaves I'll load up uh, an instrument um, Let's go with the beast. The beast is quite uh, quite a nice beastly sound. Uh, just make sure that we are getting an input. Um, um, right, MIDI input. Well, MIDI input currently is. Oh, look, it says Axiom. Um, we're just going to use all MIDI inputs for now, so it should register. And yes, you can see there as I'm pressing the keys, it's registering. So that's the MIDI notes registering. Great. Um, what it's not currently doing is, oh yeah, because I haven't got the output selected, let's select the output of the beast. Trying to do this left handed is not easy. USB fully functional, totally restored, even with the little dodgy jumper cables, but that was the only way to do it. And uh, it's quite common in a lot of fixes. But the knobs and sliders still work. Again, you should be able to see the MIDI information coming in. Yeah, that's all the sliders, knobs, and then the pads. So yeah, it looks like that is completely fully functional. A little bit of time, but uh, you know, a little bit of effort and soldering iron goes a long way. Mystic, you can have this back now. And there we Works. go. There we are. Mystic, you can have that back now. Done.